All right, here we go. 1.3 rates of change. The average velocity can be found in the same way that we found the slope of the secant. The instantaneous velocity is the slope of the tangent to the graph of the position function and is found in the same way that we found the slope of the tangent. Example 1. The position function of an object is given by the uh, function f at t equals 5t squared minus 12 and you're to write an expression for the average velocity from t equals 3 to t equals 3 plus h. So what we're trying to do is find an expression with these values where h is some value and we don't know what that value is. So we're finding a simplified expression for the average velocity. We do that by not using the limit but what we're doing is taking 5 plugging it f at 3 plus h minus f at 3 divided by 3 plus h minus 3 which turns out to be h. When we plug that in we find out that the average rate of change is when we simplify it will be 45 plus 30h okay all of this 45 plus 30h minus 5h squared all of this right here is this part expanded so we expanded this 3 plus h all squared foiled it out and then we expanded it again we go on to the next page and you'll see that the like terms are collected okay so like terms are collected and we find out that the average velocity turns out to be 30 plus h, 5h, and that's simplified. So 30 plus 5h is the average velocity. Let's look at part b. Part b, you're asked to find the instantaneous velocity at t equals 3. To do that, we can still use what we use for our average velocity, but put the limit in front of it. So the limit as h approaches 0, so basically the distance between 3 and the next point is so small so we're finding a limit as h approaches 0 of 30 plus 5h. So from the average velocity, we take the limit of that as h approaches 0 so that the distance basically it will be the instantaneous velocity. And it turns out that the limit of that answer is going to be 30. So it'll be 30, however, with the distance measurement per length of time. So if it was meters per second, it would be meters, 30 meters per second. And that would be the instantaneous velocity at the point time equals 3. All right, let's look at another one. Example number 2. The function h at t is equal to negative 2t squared plus 5t plus 3. Describe the height of a ball after t seconds when it is thrown from Braden to Kathleen. Find the average velocity of the ball for the time period from t equals 1 lasting for a 1 second, b 0 0.5 seconds, and 3 0 0.01 seconds. So what we're trying to find here is what is the average velocity at these particular values. So they last from t equals 1, t equals 1, to t equals 2, t equals 1, to 1.5, 1, to 0 0.01. So what these values here are your h values, your different h values. What makes sense for us to do is to find the generic equation for average velocity using t equals 1 as our first part and then 1 plus h being our second value and h being any one of these three. So we'll do that average velocity, negative 2 times 1 plus h all squared. So again, we're using h at 1 plus h and h at 1. And we're trying to find those values. So the average velocity, we find the value, simplify the, expand the expression, simplify it, and reduce. 
And what you end up having after you do all this, okay, is you end up having a point where you need to collect those like terms. So all those terms there need to be collected. And you end up with an answer of that in the numerator. So all the extra numbers end up disappearing. You're left with just the H's on top. Common factor the numerator. And cancel the numerator with the denominator. And you end up with the average velocity being 1 minus 2H. So that is the average velocity of the function from one second to whatever the h value is. And we're going to sub in the respective h values that we have in the question and we plug it in to find the average velocity is 1 meter per second, 0 meters per second, and 0 0.8 meters per, sorry, 0 0.98 meters per second for that, for the last one. So these are the three different values, negative 1 meters per second, 0 meter per second, and 0 0.98 meters per second for each of these respective h values. All right, now let's look at, this would be part b, let's find the instantaneous velocity at t equals 1. So this being part b now. Part b, whoops, let's go there. Part B says find the instantaneous velocity and we find out that at t equals 1. Well, we can take the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 minus 2h, plug in 0 for h, and we find out that the instantaneous velocity at t equals 1 is 1 meter per second. All right, next one. Example number three. The velocity of an object is given by the following. And we're just going to change that to a th the four to a three. There we go. And the velocity of an object is given by v at t is equal to t squared minus 9t plus 14, where t is the time in seconds. When is the object at rest? So this is the velocity of the object. You're already given that, folks. You don't have to actually find the velocity and then calculate. So what we need to know is what does, when is the object at rest? What does that mean? Well, if we think about it, back in advanced functions, you learned about something be at rest would be at a maximum or minimum of a particular equation. This here is the velocity function. So when the velocity is at rest means that the velocity must equal zero. So we set v at t equal to zero. And you plug it in, and lo and behold, when you plug it in, you end up with values for t. t equals 7, and t equals 2. So that means at 2 seconds, and at 7 seconds, the object is at rest. Okay, example number 4. State the graphical and the application interpretation for the following. S at 5 minus s at 1 over 4, and this one. So these two here, what do these represent graphically? This represents the secant, the slope of the secant. This here represents slope of the tangent. So secant slope and slope of the tangent. Application interpretation, this represents the average velocity. This one over here represents the instantaneous velocity. All right, let's go on to the next one. So what we're looking at in this is we're going to describe the graph given that the x-axis is time in seconds and the y-axis is the distance in meters. So this is like a position function. What's happening from A to B? Well, A to B would be the secant. And the secant has a negative slope Okay, so in that case, you would find the C, it, it would be the average velocity. All right, then at B, B would also have a negative slope, but this is also the tangent. Let's go on to the next part. B to C, the secant is, it's a secant, and it looks like that from B to C here, folks, 
we were looking at possibly a value of zero here, possibly a secant value of zero. What that means is somewhere along the lines there was a change in direction. So a secant being zero indicates that there must have been a change of direction that happened in order to have a secant value of zero. Let's go to the next one. Uh, at point C, if we look carefully, at point C we're looking at a positive slope. So a tangent with positive slope. C to D, positive slope is secant. D, to D is positive slope of tangent. D to E is positive slope of a secant. E in particular, you should note that at E there's a zero slope and that's the slope of the tangent. So in this case, if this was a velocity one, we would know that at E it would be, um, sorry, if this is a position vector, the velocity here at this point would actually be zero, it would be at rest. So again, this is a position function, imagine. At A to B, the velocity would have a negative value. B to C, the the in average velocity would be zero, so there had to be a change of direction. At C, the velocity value would be positive. At D, the velocity value would also be positive, again instantaneous velocity, but C to D is a secant, so the average velocity would be positive. E specifically would have a, po a zero value for the uh, instantaneous velocity, because this would be when the object was at rest, for that instant moment. Okay, and that's all folks. You have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon.